السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Welcome to another episode of the Gems of the Heart where we look into our hearts and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts for us but we can't see really our hearts because it's inside of our bodies and really how uh, weak are the human beings they cannot really see what's in their hearts and they cannot even purify their hearts except if it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's the owner of these hearts and that's why we would see some people they are overpowered with what they feel they feel depressed they feel sad they can't change there's no switch where they can switch their feelings and they would make their heart in such a state it's something that needs effort and taking the proper means to achieve the purification of the heart but most importantly by the help and the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's the owner of all things and that's why if a person wants to be guided yes they have to take the path and the means to be guided but guidance is in the hands of Allah and that's why we have to constantly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify, purify our hearts and we have to protect this heart from being destroyed and polluted the easiest thing that a person can do on the face of earth is to break something, is to destroy something. But to build, that needs a lot of effort, it needs a lot of knowledge, a lot of patience. And if we take a, any, any structure, a building for example, anybody can destroy it. Anybody that has the proper tools, they can just break it down. You don't need much of knowledge for a person to do that. Right? But when a person wants to build that structure, how much effort is needed? And that's why we can build and purify our hearts and continue to adorn it with what is benefiting for us. But then the destruction of it can be very fast. And that's why we have to be very careful when it comes to sins, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, turning away from the truth. We have to be careful with what we see and what we hear because all of these things pollutes our hearts. We have to watch what we're seeing, what we're hearing with the ease of the fitna nowadays, with social media, with the ease of technology and so on. People, oh, you know, many people that are suffering from being addicted to what they keep on watching day after day and that pollutes the hearts unless it's something that would get them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the revelation from Allah. And the book of Allah, the sunnah of the Prophet sallam, this is the source of purification. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and he's well acquainted of what's in our hearts and what takes us to our salvation and so on. We've been talking about the names and attributes of Allah as a way to purify our hearts and the effect of that in our hearts as part of the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's from the very beginning talking about matters of aqidah, matters of belief and how that affects and purify our hearts. So the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believing in his lordship, that he's the Rabb, the Lord, the owner of all things, the creator, the sustainer, that he's the only one worthy of worship and that's the message of the messengers of Allah and this Tawheed versus Shirk and associating partners with Allah which negates and makes the heart completely immersed in pollution and, and its own destruction is there. And then the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his names and attributes. And we've been talking about many of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of which inshallah ta'ala will talk about that tonight is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Khabir the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Khabir which means the well acquainted the one that is the knower of all things but it's more than just knowing the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Khabir is mentioned in the Quran 45 times which shows the importance of it as all the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we only know them from the revelation from Allah it is not for anyone to invent a name to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to know the meaning. We need to reflect upon some of the verses that talks about this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit from it, to purify our hearts with the yaqeen, with the certainty that we would have with regards to this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then to see how can that affect us in our practical life, in our actions, in our speech and actions. Because that should have an effect in our hearts and our speech and actions so that we perfect and complete our Iman and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with His names and attributes. First of all, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Khabir, 
as the ulama they say and once it's mentioned they always mention the knowledge and as we know and we mentioned that before that one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Alim the all-knower subhanahu wa ta'ala so they say Al-Khabir as some said it's knowledge and more so it's more than just knowledge to have the knowledge of something and then to be well acquainted of it to know the reality of it and to use it and we're talking about from the human perspective when people talk about experience right? for example if people knew the knowledge of how to uh, to make a car right? they have the knowledge of how to manufacture a car why they keep on changing year after year and every year there's you know, this bottle of this year of the car is such a way and then after that you know, every year comes with more addition to things and, and things of that nature human beings are learning from their previous experience they become more and more experienced and well acquainted with things right? and this is how we can deficient the human beings some people think that this is how amazing are the human beings yes they are as far as being a creation of Allah but one of the interesting things that one time someone mentioned do we have every year a version of the human beings or it's the human being is the same human being Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth created the human being and we are the same human beings right? there's no uh, renewing or addition to the uh, to the human being since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam and that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-khabir he's, he's the one, one that is well acquainted the most knowledgeable subhanahu wa ta'ala that means there's no need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to change things meaning in the creation of Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the all knower subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in our hearts know whether we are sincere or not whether we are truthful or not he knows best what is good for us and that's why the revelation from Allah the Quran and the Sunnah the Prophet sallam, fits that perfectly there is no need for us to change anything in the deen of Islam so if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade something more than 1400 years ago it continues to be forbidden till today till the day of judgment nothing is going to happen to make that thing becomes benefiting for us or we think it's benefiting from our, for us it would never be benefiting because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade it if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to establish the salah five times a day it's going to continue to be that way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well acquainted and that's one of the miraculous things that many people they don't see in the deen of al-islam it's a system it's orders from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will continue to face the changes of life and the different cultures and different times of age and so on and it will continue to be the best way of life to all of these different lifestyles and people on the face of earth and whether it's in the 21st century or the 5th century whatever there is it can fit the needs and the perfection of the purpose of one's life and that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-khabir he is the all-knower subhanahu wa ta'ala that is well acquainted of his creation and therefore as we would see inshallah ta'ala the, the fruits of this the, the result of this how can we benefit from this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our life but before that if we look into some of the verses in the Quran that talks about this not in a particular order but sometimes the word al-khabir you would find it with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-hakim and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-hakim meaning the most wise as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in Surah Al-An'am verse number 18 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa huwa al-qahir fawqa ibadih wa huwa al-hakim al-khabir that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overpowers his creation he's above them all he's in full control subhanahu wa ta'ala and this by itself might make a person think because looking at a human perspective when someone overpowers someone he can be foolish he can do things without wisdom but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa huwa al-hakim al-khabir he's the all wise subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is al-khabir the one that is well acquainted with his creation he knows best who is to be given life and who's not and who is to be permitted to do this to do that and and the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything is by the power of Allah by the wisdom of Allah by the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well acquainted that's why people should rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone also the same combination of these two names of Allah 
Al-Hakim and Al-Khabir is mentioned in the same surah, Surah Al-An'am, verse number 73, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِالْحَقِّ وَيَوْمَ يَقُولُ كُنْ فَيَكُونْ قَوْلُهُ الْحَقِّ وَلَهُ الْمُلْكُ يَوْمَ يُنْفَخُ فِي الصُّورِ عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ وَهُوَ الْحَكِيمُ الْخَبِيرُ which means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that created the heavens and the earth by the truth. And on the day when he would say, Kun fayakun, in the day of resurrection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say for something to be, and it is. His speech, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth. The speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth. Qawlu al-haq, the speech of Allah is the truth. And to him subhanahu wa ta'ala belong the sovereignty and the dominion of the heavens and the earth and the day when the trumpet will be blown in, meaning in the day of judgment, the knower of the unseen and the seen. And he is Al-Hakim Al-Khabir. He is the most wise. He is the one that is well acquainted. So again, for the human being to submit themselves willingly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's the creator of the heavens and the earth. And the day of judgment is owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why panic? Why seek guidance from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why oppose the orders of Allah? You know, this is the, the fruits even, and this is part of the fruits of believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His names and attributes, that it brings the peace and the happiness for the human being on the face of earth. That everything is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the most wise. He is the all-knower subhanahu wa ta'ala with, with knowing with the reality of things and how things would lead to one another and, and that's why sometimes things are hidden from people things are hidden from people and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even mentioned that in the Quran uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Latif Al-Khabir Al-Latif is the one that is subtle in his, uh, in his actions in his, uh, in his Qadr nobody knows exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, decree for people till it happens like if we go to Surah Al-Mulk, for example, verse number 14, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقْ وَهُوَ اللَّطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ right? Does he who created not know while he is the subtle, the acquainted? أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقْ Doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows his creation? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows his creation best. So he is اللَّطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ اللَّطِيفُ The one that things happen without necessarily people knowing it. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees something, uh, He would create the means for it. But sometimes people don't see how things are going, where things are going. Human beings, because of the lack of their knowledge, they might think, and, and this is something very, very interesting and very important. Many people, they don't pay attention to this. If we take, for example, the situation of the Muslims today, when many of the Muslims even, when they see that Muslims are weak, oppressed, that they don't have physical power and so on and so forth, humiliated. And people would see that this is not really doesn't look good in the future. Things are going the way that it's, things are progressing. It's going to get worse and worse and worse and so on. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-khabir. And things when it happens, it happens without the human beings knowing necessarily the outcome of it. And that's why we see that clearly in our life that the, the most dark part of the night right comes after that, the break of dawn. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His decree is different than what people think. Yes, there are means. If people are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will aid them and support them and so on. And they are being tested. And the victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is definitely coming, no doubt. Yes, things can get worse and worse and so on, but the real worst situation is when a person loses one's iman, one's faith. When a Muslim is being threatened, for example, right? like as you see sometimes people or these uh, things in certain parts of the world where they threaten the Muslims or to beat up a Muslim or to punish a Muslim or whatever there is. Those who have weak iman, they might compromise their religion. Or a woman take off her hijab because she doesn't want to be seen as a Muslim because she's afraid of harm might happen to her. The weakness of al-Iman. And this is basically the goal of those evildoers is to get those who have weak Iman to get them out of the way for them to compromise their religion. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise and he's above all. The more things a person sees, the more that it's more difficult, the more that we're supposed to hold fast to the deen of Allah. 
and see how the companions of the Prophet وسلم, they went through when they were in Mecca and how much suffering and physical uh, punishments that they went through and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them victory later when they were patient, when they're truthful. And this is the ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well aware of what's everything is happening. And when we see in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, what we are ordered to do is to hold fast to the truth and to be obedient to Allah, to be busy ourselves with the ibadah, with the worship of Allah and seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the worst thing that can happen to a person is to commit sins and to live a life of forgetfulness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully aware of what everybody does. And no injustice whatsoever will continue to be in this life and continuing to the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. And he's well acquainted with what everybody does, with everybody plotting and uh, doing whatever evil doing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-khabir. He's the well acquainted of all things. So therefore... The yaqeen and the certainty that should be present in the hearts of the believers should make them content and focused on the purpose of their life and not to be distracted by what they see in their life of distractions and so on. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned that the issue of the fact that things are not necessarily being seen to the people in this life happens in a subtle way. In Surah Al-An'am, we go back again to Surah Al-An'am, Verse number 103, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that. لَا تُدْرِكُهُ الْأَبْصَارُ وَهُوَ يُدْرِكُ الْأَبْصَارَ وَهُوَ الْلَطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, nobody can really uh, see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Vision perceives him not, but he perceives all vision. And he is the subtle, the acquainted. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of all things, so worship him alone subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life. And nobody can perceive or encompass Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his sight even in the hereafter, meaning uh, the ahata the or, or, or encompass Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one that perceives all vision and he is al latiful khabir. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al latif he's the most subtle and he is al khabir subhanahu wa ta'ala, the well acquainted. And uh, if we go through the verses, as we said, there are 45 verses in the Quran that talks about the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-Khabir. Verses that talks about the Tawheed, about the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and how that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His power is basically, nothing is the like of it, because He's the creator of all things. And there, our actions has to be according to what we belief and how we know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what the people their intentions and what their whims and what they intend to do and if, are, if they are truthful or not right and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tested the believers with regards to this and that's why people should be praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is the one that is worthy of praise because his knowledge encompasses everything and he is the all knower subhanahu wa ta'ala the one that knows the matters of knowledge in its reality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, when uh, he talked, for example, about some of the attributes of Allah, as, for example, in the beginning of Surah, uh, Surah Saba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alhamdulillahi alladhi lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard, wa lahu alhamdu fi al-akhira, wa huwa al-hakim al-khabir, which means, uh, Alhamdulillah, all praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to whom belongs whatever uh, is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth and to him belongs all praise in the hereafter and he is the wise the acquainted al-hakim al-khabir al-hakim al-khabir is mentioned again here so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-hakim al-khabir and praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all things because everything is in the heavens and the earth belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these are facts and all the praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be in the hereafter and he is the all wise the one that is well acquainted by his creation and so on. The ilm, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is in such a way that it encompasses everything. There's no inward and outward. There's no uh, whims, desires. There's no plans. There's no plots. There's nothing whatsoever unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows of it perfectly. And he's the most perfect subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, this is something that is more than, than just the knowledge. And that's why people need to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, accordingly. He knows 
about ourselves more than when we know ourselves. We think that we know what is good for us. No, we don't. We do not know what is good for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And that's what we heard in the previous verse. Allah ya'lamu mun khalaq. Wa latif al khabir. Doesn't he know the one that he created? He created us. He knows ourselves more than we know ourselves. And that's why we need to submit ourselves to the orders of Allah. Because the orders, when it comes from Allah, it comes from the one that created us. So how can a person oppose this? You know, a human being, they do the simplest things and it's something that is so obvious. If they have a machine or something that they don't know how it's done, uh, they would follow the instructions very well. And even in the, in the, structure, the instruction of how to maintain it. Right? Don't, people don't just drive their cars and that's it. They have to maintain their car. And they go to the manufacturer to ask. Or in general, you know, those who manufacture the cars, they know how the car works and so on. So people won't, for example, figure out themselves according to their own knowledge when they don't have any knowledge about the, uh, whatever they're driving, for example. They trust this and they act according to this. Nobody would really uh, dispute in this matter. So the same thing which is an even more important, they should not dispute in the fact that the only one that would really make them live their life in the most perfect way is the one that created them. And that's why we see this chaos in the lives of the human beings. Because they think that they know better. They know or they think that they can do things without the guidance from Allah. Without being guided from the one that created them. And that's why human beings are just spreading corruption and evil doing on the face of earth because of this fact. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also in the Quran talked about our actions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-khabir. So we can look at that from the perspective of everything in the heavens and earth. Matter of belief, we have to believe in this. And we have to see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His knowledge encompasses everything. And that we have to see that in the religion of Allah, everything is by this. That means we have to basically follow what's in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's from the most wise subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that knows things in, in its reality, in its real form. No wrong perception of things. No mistakes whatsoever. It's the most perfect. And another aspect of it is our actions. When we do something, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not just that He knows about it, that He is Al-Khabir too, that He is the one that is knowing it with its reality, with its inward and outward actions. We can deceive one another. We can make salah most perfectly physically. And people might think that we are, mashallah, doing great. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in our hearts, how our intentions and how devotion we have in our heart, and how we have the fear of Allah, and so on and so forth. When a person gives charity, a person might benefit so many people with his charity, and he looks like he's such a righteous person. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best whether this is for the sake of Allah or not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, as an example, in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 271, with regards to exposing, showing the charity or concealing it and hiding it, which is an issue that always comes about when a person wants to give something in charity. Should I show my charity to the people or should I hide it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِن تُبْدُوا الصَّدَقَاتِ فَنِعِمَّا هِي وَإِن تُخْفُوهَا وَتُؤْتُوهَا الْفُقَرَاءِ فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَيُكَفِّرُ عَنْكُمْ مِنْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرٌ Which means that if you disclose your charities, that means they are good for you. This is great. But if you conceal it, and you conceal this charity and give them to the poor, it is better for you. And he will remove from you some of your misdeeds, and thereby and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with what you do is fully acquainted. So the ayah says that if you hide, if you conceal your charity, this is better for you. If you show it, it's still it's good for you. But what makes it good and what make, makes it not good is what's inside of you. Wallahu bima ta'amaluna khabir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully acquainted with what you do. Are you doing it for the sake of Allah? Are you doing it for the sake of showing off to the people? And so on. So this is what the concern should be. Sometimes showing the charity might be better in certain situations. The most important thing that a person should work on is one's heart. A person, for example, wants to make salah. He's with a group of people and it's night time and he wants to make the night prayer. But he feels if I pray while in their presence, they might be some form of a showing off. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in your heart. Whether you're doing it to show off 
or whether you're doing it for the sake of Allah. And that's basically the power of Allah. He is Al Khabir. It's a great name of Allah. Really, if we reflect upon it, if we understand it fully, if it goes into our hearts, our entire life can change. How can our life change in believing in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al Khabir? This is, inshallah ta'ala, we'll try to talk about that after the break, so stay with us, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulullah. Welcome back, and we're talking about the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al Khabir, the one that is fully acquainted of what his creation are doing and saying. And he's the one that is fully acquainted when it comes to his revelation, the rulings, the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's fully acquainted with knowledge that anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do, this is the most perfect for us. Don't think that you would know better or that if I avoid this or if I do this, this will bring good for me. It doesn't work this way. Even if a person doesn't say it with his own speech, sometimes action speaks louder than speech. When a person would do something, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, neglecting an order of Allah, thinking that if I sleep longer and do not wake up for Fajr prayer, this will make me more energetic when I go to work in the morning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully acquainted of what is best for us. And if He ordered us to pray at a specific time, which is the time of Fajr for example, if He subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the men to go to the masjid in the Fajr time, that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully acquainted of how we are and how we function, how we work and how we do things. So there's nothing better than to follow the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's one of the, the signs that a person really understands the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the effects of and, uh, you know, the, the, the way that we should benefit from the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Khabir, Part of it is matters of Iman as we heard in the previous verses and how the matter of belief should be in such a way in the hearts of the believers with certainty and to establish the pillars of Al-Iman and one of which is to uh, really see the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His decree, in His qadr and we should be content and should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and patient with the qadr of Allah because nothing happens without the knowledge of Allah, the power of Allah and he's well acquainted exactly of what you need and what's best for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that best. There's one of the examples of that is mentioned in Surah Ash-Shura, verse number 27, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَوْ بَسَتَ اللَّهُ الرِّزْقَ لِعِبَادِهِ لَبَغَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنْ يُنَزِّلُ بِقَدَرٍ مَا يَشَاءُ إِنَّهُ بِعِبَادِهِ خَبِيرٌ بَصِيرٌ Which means, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had extended the provision for his servants gave us so much provisions on the face of earth extended more than what he we already see from the decree of Allah they would have committed tyranny throughout the earth but he sends it down in an amount which he wills indeed he is of his servants khabirun basir acquainted and seeing so this is in general to all human beings and to specific individuals who's the one that provides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you take the means as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered you to take the means. And there are permissible means, and there are evil means, sinful means. And the choice is there. And a person might choose to take the wrongdoing means to seek provisions. They will be provided for in this life, but there is a punishment for them in the hereafter. If they don't repent to Allah, and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive them. And also there things can happen to them on the face of earth. But if people truly are sincerely aware of this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he is the provider and he is the fully acquainted of what they do and what's best for them they will only take the permissible means and the outcome, the results they rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them that much they are grateful to Allah if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them abundance and provisions they are grateful to Allah they are not choosing to be lazy or turning away from things, they're doing the best they can. And knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He gives everyone what they wish for, right, life would not be in such a way that we would see it now. For example, in any society, imagine that a society does not have people to collect their garbage, for example. Right? Not everybody would like to take that position. It's a well-respected a job if a person is seeking what is pro, you know, provisions that are halal but not everybody wants to do that job 
but they appreciate so much this job to be done otherwise they cannot live their life in a normal way so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distribute provisions according to his wisdom subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is subhanahu wa ta'ala see the verse that we just talked about that how the word bi'ibadi is mentioned first innahu bi'ibadihi khabirun basir that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of his servants this is mentioned first of his servants khabirun basir that he is acquainted and seeing of course the meaning if we say that like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is acquainted and seeing his servants it gives a meaning but the verse is saying innahu bi'ibadihi that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of his servants he is acquainted and seeing and we are the slaves of Allah we are the servants of Allah so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of our own selves he is acquainted and he is the all seer subhanahu wa ta'ala so be content be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not panic so one of the benefits here is to believe in the qadr of Allah to believe in the pillars of al-iman to have this life of contentment and goodness uh, one of which is to believe in the qadr of Allah another example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah An-Nisa uh, verse number 35 when there are disputes between husband and wife and they bring uh, arbitrator between them one from her family one from his family if the dispute is from them both and they cannot reach really peace after all the means are taken and that's why we're not in the subject talking about this issue uh, but it's very important for husbands and wife not to refer to this right away because they can fix their own problems together alone and uh, if there is nothing works whatsoever then this can be uh, a stage where they can take so but the point here that is is needed here that in the verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about something and he mentioned the name al-khabir at the end uh, let's first see the verse when khiftum shikaqa baynihim as you see fab'athu hakaman min ahli wa hakaman min ahliha in yurida islahan yuwaffiq Allah baynahum inna Allah kana aliman khabir which means if you fear shikaq uh, dissension between the two send an arbitrator from his people and an arbitrator from her people if they both desire reconciliation Allah will cause it between them uh, and Allah is ever knowing and acquainted khabir the point here that we need to reflect upon that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all-knower and he is al-khabir the one that is well acquainted this is refers to in yurida islahan yuwaffiq Allah baynahum if these two arbitrators if the two husband and wife if the husband and wife they really intend reconciliation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide them through it the intentions are the person sometimes people they have disputes and they would you know accept the fact that there should be an arbitrator or whatever but inside of them they don't want it to work they don't want it to work so the verse is really testing what's in the hearts that if they intend and that's why people need to intend to reconciliate when there is a dispute Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide them will cause it to happen because indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alim and khabiran he's the unknower subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's the one that is fully acquainted so you can take all the means you can take whatever best and perfect means for things to work unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees in the hearts of the people the sincerity that they want things to work they want reconciliation they want things to happen in a good way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might not let something like that to, to, to go through so we have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our sincerity and truthfulness in our hearts that's a very key really uh, aspect in believing and acting according to these names of Allah and that's one of the great benefits we learn from the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-khabir because he knows our secrets he knows what's in our hearts so we should not deal with one another just physically people are it's hidden from them what's in our hearts but Allah knows so if you are in a relationship husband and wife whatever there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in the heart of the husband what's in the heart of the wife so worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by treating others with what's in your heart being sincere being truthful and therefore things will will, will become good and, and perfected and so on why there's so many disputes for example in households we need to check what's in our hearts we need to purify our hearts and to have this goodness in it that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone that we're seeking the pleasure of Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make things better for us so this truthfulness in the heart and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in our hearts so therefore 
briefly when we talk about the benefits of what we heard. We have to have the certainty. And al yaqeen the certainty in the promise of Allah. So read the Quran, get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us and have certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's promise is the truth. And he's well acquainted of your situation very well. You just need to be patient. Whether it's on a personal level, a person is sick, lack of wealth, difficulties that a person faces and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well acquainted of your situation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to be in that situation obedient to him. And to continue to be content and to be patient and to be pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will find ways out for you. But just be patient. But and also understand the reality of this life. That we're not created in this life and this life will be forever the way that we want it to be. Otherwise, if that's the case, then we would always still uh, stay young. If a person, you know, it's, if it's up to us. But we go from one year to the other, from one stage to the other. And this is how life is. And if it's, you know, it's not created for it to be at one stage, at one way all the time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us to see our patience and to see how we are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have certainty. So basically, one of the good outcome of believing in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Khabir is to have this yaqeen would make us content, would make us establish the salah, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And when it comes to the physical things that we face in our life, leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take the means, but know that if you are obedient to Allah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees in your heart this sincerity, this truthfulness, the outcome of it definitely will be the best. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that, but it doesn't have to happen immediately. This can be delayed, yes, for years or whatever there is, but the outcome definitely will be something that a person would never regret. And therefore, one of the great benefits is to be always pleased with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for you, because he's al-khabir subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for you after you took all the means and everything, chose for you to be sick, you're pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-khabir, he knows that this is what is best for you if you are patient. And it doesn't mean that if someone is healthy, that means this is better for them. It might be a curse for them if they use their health in the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only decree what is best for the human being if they understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is afflicting them with it for what reason and that comes from the revelation from Allah if something that is needs patience patience is a beautiful thing so therefore this is a way to elevate oneself if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants a person to be grateful he gives him from the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so to always be pleased the pleasure to, to be pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. Not when you're healthy and wealthy and all kinds of things. And then when a person is not, then he's not pleased with Allah. This is definitely not what is being pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means. To be pleased with the deen of Allah. To be pleased with the religion of Islam as your religion. To be pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as our Lord. To be pleased with the Prophet sallallahu being the messenger of Allah. That means we follow the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, and to be pleased with that. Difficult at certain specific times, that's how life is. But to be pleased with being, this is being the fact. Uh, and that's how a person should always bring this rida or to be pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why we, we say that in the morning and the evening. Because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al khabir one of the great meanings also that and benefits that we learn from this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-khabir, is to prepare ourselves for the hereafter. When we say to prepare ourselves for the hereafter, because the hereafter, what's hidden in ourselves will be exposed, will be exposed in the Day of Judgment. We conceal what's in our hearts in this life. Nobody knows what's in our hearts except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Day of Judgment, everything will be exposed. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, أَفَلَا يَعْلَمُ إِذَا بُعْثِرَ مَا فِي الصُّدُورُ وَمَا فِي الْكُبُورُ وَحُصِّلَ مَا فِي الصُّدُورُ إِنَّ رَبَّهُمْ بِهِمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ لَخَبِيرٍ Surah Al-Adiyat That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to his slaves in the Day of Judgment, لَخَبِير He is the one that is fully acquainted. So when the graves is being exposed, meaning 
people will be resurrected in the day of judgment and what's in the hearts will be exposed will be apparent because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well acquainted of what was in their hearts and the reward is punishment and punishment is given accordingly so to prepare ourselves with the hereafter the hereafter is not by just phys fixing our physical actions our physical actions has to be according to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, but with the inward actions, with these physical actions, to be sincerely for the sake of Allah, not to show off, to sincerely follow the way the Prophet ﷺ, to have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so on and so forth. So we need to pay attention more to our hearts. And this is one of the ways to purify our hearts. To know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his names and attributes. And to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accordingly. And when people have this in the hearts and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. They excel so much in the good deeds and their iman and perfecting of their iman. This is the proper tarbiyah and upbringing of ourselves and our iman. And our even children and so on. Is to build what's in the hearts of this matters of belief and certainty. And preparing ourselves and at the end of the day not at the end of one's life at the end of the day nobody really care about anyone else our deeds will be the ones that will go to uh, with us in our graves nobody will go to the graves with us right everybody will be alone in their graves after they die the loved ones if someone that is loved to you right uh, when a person dies they would get rid of the body immediately they won't stay you know next to that person for even a day and that's to honor the deceased of course is to bury the deceased so what goes into the grave with us? Our actions, our speech and actions. And that's what we need to make sure that it's correct. And this is the focus that we have to perfect our actions, perfected our actions and our speech to be sincere and not to waste our life by just doing things without paying attention uh, to the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-khabir. He knows what's in our hearts and he's the most merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala. So always being sincere, being truthful, the barakah and the blessings of things that we do will be so much more than just the, the fact of that we're doing some physical action. That's why the early generations of Islam, some of them, they lived a very short period of time. And their actions physically was not as much as those who lived long. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave those who among them great rewards even though they lived a short period of time. Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh radiallahu anhu. Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu, he died as two narrations, one said 28, some said 32 years old, very young. And he, as the Prophet ﷺ said, will come in the Day of Judgment ahead of all other ulama, all the scholars of this ummah, by a distance of a stone being thrown. In that short period of time, what did Mu'adh radiallahu anhu did? How many physical actions? Not much. The same thing with the great companions of the Prophet ﷺ. So the point here is, to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-khabir, the heart can take us so much advanced ahead in all kinds of good things if we truly believe in the names and attributes of Allah and make that affect our hearts and speech and actions to follow the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Because of the time, we'll stop here inshallah ta'ala. And I hope and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this is, can be benefiting for us to purify our hearts and to continue to purify our hearts with more of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So till next time, sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.